All right, thanks. All right, let's go back to you, Fumi. You're welcome to the program once yeah. more. And I think the good place to start is to ask that question. Do you think any of these women, these 24 women, will bring the jinx this time and be voted in, you know, from the ballot box? Honestly, I have my, my doubts about it. Now, we have one or two women that are very popular. The, um, the woman at Damawa State mm -hmm. seems to be very... Um, she, she seems to be able to touch the the electorate in a way that no other women have been able to talk. And so she, out of all of them, may be the one that might have a higher chance of winning governorship. And it will be, it will be a welcome development in Nigeria, if you ask me. If we get a woman, a woman governor, then maybe we will begin to see, or maybe people realize that women can actually also step up to the plate, you know, and do what everybody else thinks that they can't do. Yeah, but... It in all of this, now over time, from all that we have said, it was just once that uh, a woman was uh, a governor for just a short while. Yeah. So, so if I, I, I try to understand that, is it that um, women don't get all the support that they require, or is it a thing at the party level, or women not supporting women, or issues of financing? Mm. What are the issues, okay, so, really? So there are major, major, <laughs> there are, and there are major issues, and I'll yeah. tell you. Okay, so first of all, the two major parties before now, the PDP and the APC, mm. were not particularly women, um, what's the word to use, women friendly. Mm. You know, so you have a lot of women at the um, grassroots area, a lot of women that are ward chairman, ward canvassers. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of women at that level. But for some funny reason, they never let their women rise. You know, you will not hear that a woman is running for chairman or running for council. They wouldn't even allow it. Women are not allowed. Okay, so one, that's one, right? On the other hand, I think that the women who want to run also don't have the, the um, requisite funding. Mm. You know, a, when you go, for a woman and you're going, you're running for elections. I, I ran for elections in 2019. And you go outsourcing for funding. They would rather fund the men mm. before they fund you. Why and is if that you, so? And if you, if you look around the world over, even the NGOs that fund people for politics, it's just a small fraction that actually fund women. So most people are funding men. Yes, there, there's a lot of lip, lip service to let the women do it, give us, but most of the funding for women is very... Is but very why would good. they rather fund the men and not the women? Okay, so there are, I, I think there are lots of reasons. Okay, so first of all, women themselves, I, I think that women themselves haven't, haven't shown... Let me let me try and explain. Let me let me say this in, in, in a proverb. They mm -hmm. said a woman has to do twice as much to get half the credit. You know, that if a what a man what a man can do, a woman has to do twice as much to get half that credit. Mm -hmm. So she has to double up. It's it's unfortunately the society we're in, we're in a patriarchal society. So women have to double up. They have to do double to show that they are capable. Because we're constantly having to prove ourselves to people who don't want us to be there in the first place because of the culture. And then the funny part is that if you are that kind of a woman, then you have issues. They can't start saying that you're too hard, you're too tough, you're not behaving like a woman. I've, you know, you constantly get those callers. I had somebody telling me, and the Bible says women should submit to men. I said, excuse me, where did they write it in the Bible? That the woman must submit to a man. It's not there. It's there. It isn't. <laughs> Let's leave the Bible out of this, but it is there. It's not there. It isn't there. It is let there. Me, so let me tell you what it says, so that we can make it clear. This is what I tell people. A woman should submit the to her husband. The Bible says, The issue is yes, if her husband submit to your men own there. husband. Exactly. Yeah. But you see, every time they read it, they read women submit to men. So if you're a woman and you're constantly standing your ground, you, you get a bad rep or you get a bad name. People begin to think, oh, this woman is too tough, she's too hard, safe, she's too... And that's why a lot of women eventually begin to step back, you know, let them not think I'm too tough, let them not think, you know, which is another problem that women have. They're too bothered about what people think about them. All right, let me ask you, 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 you ran for House of Reps in Lagos under the YPP. Tell us your experience and what has changed from that time and today. Okay, so for YPP, YPP was a party that was, one of, at that time, it was a party where they were willing, willing to allow the women to run. As in, there was a lot of support for women. There was, you know, and I think, um, I, would, I mean, I would say King Mogalu was one of the people that really 
you know, was behind that movement. He was solidly behind us women, was willing to support and push the women to be part of the, of the politics. And so we were all interested. We all came together and we were working hard to, um, to put ourselves out there and to contest for the elections. I think this year is a little different in the terms that things just suddenly changed. The, the dynamics for elections changed this year. The, for the, the worse or better? The third, no, I think better. Okay. The third um, opposition, the third force showed up very clearly this year. Mm. And so it just, it just changed the whole dynamics of the, election, of the election system. And unfortunately, even this third force was not focused on women. How many of people mm. in LP really were women that ran for elections? Very, very many. 